Optimization of therapy for patients with high-risk MDS uh, is a slow-going process. Um, you know, patients, uh, we have made some advances, and I think it was a nice introduction uh, session uh, yesterday where we really went over where are we now in MDS, especially in high-risk MDS. We have improvements in supportive care, and we have improvements in allogeneic transplant. And that, those are modalities that can help us improve the life uh, and quality and quantity of life of our high-risk MDS patients. That said, we really have not made a significant change in our chemotherapy. And I think that uh, where I see the field going is trying to uh, look more at different phases of treatment and optimize each phase of treatment. And maybe we need to focus on smaller portions of disease. So maybe we need more trials looking specifically on how can we improve the response rate initially to treatment. Uh, the quality of that response, the time to response, uh, the number of people who get a, a good response. Uh, second, I think we need to then separately think about how to consolidate that response. And so for people who are undergoing transplant, that's again one area where we've made advances, getting more people to transplant and thinking about how to optimize transplant as well, avoiding relapse, uh, remain areas of need. But if you're not going to transplant, do you need to stay on the same intensity of therapy after remission? Can we de-escalate uh, or provide things that uh, allow for maintenance of a better quality of life uh, after uh, getting a response? And then even further, uh, long term, can we maintain a response longer so that, uh, because we really still have very few tools at re, uh, relapse or progression, uh, how do we uh, maintain a response for a longer period? And so I think looking at these little uh, parts of treatment, um, I, I hope is the way that we uh, move forward, um, uh, but we still have a lot of work to do.